Welcome, welcome, welcome to episode number 24 of the Eve's Drop podcast, brought to you this week by Candid. I will tell you a little bit more about them in a little bit. And also Seagate, that is the go-to storage Anything, anything storage, you go to them for everything that it is that you need. Let me open up a couple of notes here, and we're good. Uh, today, our special guest, Tyrone Crawford, my yes, man sir. from the Dallas Cowboys. Yes, sir. And listen, I was, I, was, I, was, uh, I was telling you right before we started that I'm super hype about this because you're like the first professional athlete that I have on here. And and originally it was it was the the first athlete was going to go to Ben Simmons, but you know shit, you know he's middle of the season. I'm in the middle of the podcast, and I'm just like hell yeah. So hey. when I when I found out that you could, I was like all about it. Hey man, happy to be man. This is this is amazing. I like what you got going, definitely. Yeah. So um, let me ask you uh, about like video games and how we came how we came to meet. Um, obviously in my in my in my floor, second floor of fifty seven fifty seven Main Street, I was like to call it the Hex Quarters. Next to us is a is a venture capitalist firm called Scoreboard Ventures, started by uh, my two good good friends and business partners, Brian uh, Dick and Ahid Giga. Super cool dudes. They uh, mm-hmm. they were actually one of the two people that wanted to bring Optic to Frisco, and uh, and I guess you were over there doing some sports thing, right? Well, what what, what do you got going on over there? If you can talk about it. Yeah. Um, well, I mean. I guess just trying to bring the sports world into the gaming world. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, we like met, marrying it, like bring, bridging well, the gap. Uh, well, yeah, I, um, some exciting news ahead, uh, definitely. But um, you know, just just trying to, yeah, I guess bridging the gap between between those worlds. Um, you know, I, I know a lot of gamers; they don't know sports, and I know a lot of athletes; they don't know games. But I know they they want to mesh at times. You know, they want to know uh one another so i know <clears throat> with you know what we got going maybe we can you know mesh that gap and uh and uh you know try and make it a, a co-ed type of type of thing where you know athletes are playing and uh players are, are watching and yeah and, and enjoying sports yeah you know what M- more often than none when and this has happened the last 10 years since i've been doing this everybody always tries to make it a oh this is what we're gonna do all right so if it's a musician or if it's like a, an athlete or whatever whatever sport it is, what 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 PR firms always try to do, or the way they pitch it to the athletes and the way they pitch it to to the gamers or the or the esports personalities is always like, all right, this is what we're gonna do, okay? Yeah. <laughs> Ty Crawford is gonna come to the studio. You guys are gonna play a one v one in Call of Duty, and then afterwards, you guys are gonna play a one v one in football. All right, and see, so was like, I'm like, the gamer's always gonna get his ass beat. Yeah. Okay, like it's not even gonna be fun for anyone, and it's so played out by this point yeah. that that. But this is what I do like, and this is what we'll talk about this later on in the podcast is is the fact that that you actually play video games. What's your favorite game? Call of Duty. Hell yeah! yeah. So, so you're in good company because that's that's what I built my business. All right, let me rephrase it. The foundation of my business was was founded on Call of Duty. That's what led me to meet the people that I met. Um, but you guys do play. It's not just a. It's it's not just a, a PR move because there's such a big fandom happening in, in, in gaming that you guys are just trying to like you know fake the funk just to get that. Like you actually play video games. Um, you have Moon Crickets on the on the thing. You were telling me a little bit about that right now. Yeah, what what yeah. is it? So uh, Moon Crickets, man. You know, it's just a. I guess a team, yeah. uh, you know, that me and my boys put together. Um, you know, we got a couple, couple athletes yeah. uh, in it, and then just you know, my boys from back home and uh, college. You know, we play together, and uh, I'm gonna I'm say it like this: is kind of a way, you know, to build something so we can continue to play without our wives, you know, yeah. getting on us about uh, playing. So, you know, we love Call of Duty. We we have this obsession with Blackout. Um, yeah. And, you know, we, we, we just like, you know, for the, for the guys that are back home in Canada, it's a way to, you know, it's a way to connect and, you know, bond with them guys, you know, without <clears throat> having to, you know, get on the phone and call or bother them through text, you know, we all got work, but, you know, we can get on later on in the nighttime and, you know, uh, call ourselves the moon crickets, you know, whatever, uh, whatever you want to any, call any us, meaning but, behind that. Uh, yeah, there's a little bit of meaning, but you know, we're, we, we're going to let people figure that out. <laughs> yeah. You know, we're just. We're just gonna just flash the logo right now yeah. and just you know. I like it, dude. Yeah, man. It's, it's got that. It's, it's got, got that dope ass '80s. A little retro. Yeah, man. hell yeah, I like it. Cricket, you know. Click, so, yeah. Cricket on top of the moon. Yeah, man. So um, yeah, there's a lot of meaning behind it. Is uh, different meanings for uh, you know for a lot of us, but um, you know we all kind of come together for that one meeting and uh yeah i mean it's just uh, us playing games and just you know hanging out through uh through video games through you know the interweb or whatever you want to call it yeah um and uh yeah man we just try and get on that blackout or uh we get fifa sometimes and madden 
So you but play that, all. You do play Madden. I always wondered. Yeah. You do. Yeah. Do you play as the, as the Cowboys? I'm telling you, I, I I would love to all the time, but we do like a random pick. You know, we hit that yeah. random button three oh, times. Oh yeah, yeah. So if I get the Cowboys, yeah, it's it's definitely um it's dangerous. It's dangerous for uh, the next man, but. Uh, a lot of the times I don't get the Cowboys, and uh, I haven't been I haven't been doing my thing lately. You know what's crazy? We'll talk about that too. Uh, what's crazy for me is I, I always wonder, like, if professional athletes play like NFL, like NFL athletes play Madden or you know NBA two K <coughs> for the for the for the basketball players, and NHL ho- NHL hockey for for the hockey players, because. I just don't 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 see like I personally have never played any any sports games and well I, a little bit here and there. All my friends play sports games. All my best friends from home mm-hmm. uh, play sports games. And just recently, we we're finally able to play a video game together. I've been doing this for ten years. And just recently, when Fortnite came out, that that like everybody plays that. Did you play it at all? Uh, I didn't get to play Fortnite. No. no? I... Well, it's, it's it's addicting. It's a really really good game. Anyway, my friends and I started playing that together for the first time ever. Never in my life have I been able to share that sort of part of my life with my friends because you know growing up you know we were all you know athletes and yeah. and, and i hate to say that in front of a real athlete right but I, you know i was um at my level right and, oh, well, i can know. see you being a baller I oh dude I'm, <laughs> I, I am i sink them i i cross them over it's just you just tell me who right? Uh, right uh but this is the first time that we were actually able to play that so having that sort of um camaraderie that you have like in real life with them whether it's playing sports or whatever having that camaraderie camaraderie in a video game for me was super special because i've been doing that for the last 10 years and every every game that i play i play with friends whether it's my players whether it's uh my my old men of optic teammates um i have that sort of relationship that sort of banter that goes on when you play that that game but to be able to talk shit to the people that i've been talking shit to for the last 20 years that's where it, yeah, it's, it's, yeah. It, it, it wasn't weird it was like it, it felt amazing dude oh, because yeah. never have i ever had that opportunity so you having the ability to play with your friends like as a norm like that's that's super amazing you were born in 89 my brother was also yeah. born in 89 what what month uh november november my, my yeah. brother was in december so you're 10 years younger than me um and that for me, like you, you growing up the way that you in, in the era that you did, it was like accepted to play video games, right? Yeah, so yeah. for well, me, I mean, it was the most part. Yeah, for me, it wasn't. For me at the time, it was still like a nerdy thing to do. I, I always talked about it. I'm like, oh, so fucking Res- Resident Evil One on, on PlayStation. PlayStation One was like the best. Yeah. Well, not the best, but my, the best PlayStation, PlayStation game that I played up until then. Um. Anyway, sorry. Let's not get. Let's not get too. Well, no, far I mean into that's it, interesting. Man. That that's definitely interesting. I I mean like, I, I never really thought about it like that. You know, like further back you know how how people thought about video well, not games too much and, farther back well i sure. mean shit man <laughs> <laughs> uh you know i was thinking yeah i mean that's that's uh it's definitely interesting because you know i feel like i'm i'm judged you yeah know, sometimes for uh you know just the way i'd be playing and so i can just imagine how you felt my bad. i'm sorry yeah, no you're good i've been hearing it all my life all right. Well, not all my life. Anyway, um, all right. Every single time we start a podcast, I like to ask by asking one question, man. Who are you today? It's <clears throat> a good question. Uh, me today, man. You know, um, obviously, I'm Tyron Crawford. Um, I'm a defensive end slash tackle for the Dallas Cowboys. Um, but I always say, you know, football is what I do. It's not who I am. So, um, you know, I'm an on- a young entrepreneur. Um, hopefully. Uh, you know, a great one one day. Um, I'm a father. Um, How many kids? I got one right now. One little girl, uh, Mia. Mm-hmm. How old? Uh, she's nine months. And I got one on the way. Girl. Congrats, man. Yeah, Congrats. man. Yeah, man. Girls that's are awesome, That's actually the first man. time I've said it publicly. So, yeah. that's oh, yeah, awesome. Well, congrats. Got another little baby girl on the way. Um, and, you know, I'm, I'm a husband. And, uh, you know, I'm a brother and, you know, son. So I'm, I'm just a, I'm a family man and, and I, I'm, I'm a football player and an entrepreneur and just trying to, you know, just be the right type of man, you know, here, yeah. but, you know, there's obviously man things happen. So I'm, yeah. life happens, but yeah, man, just, uh, just trying to be me and just have fun doing it. Good, man. Well, listen, thank you again for the second and third time. I have to continue to thank you for throughout the podcast oh, because man. I wanted this to be. I want when I started this podcast, and I wanted to do the podcast for for the longest time. But when, when I wanted to do this, I wanted to to originally call it the bridge, right? The bridge between between ju- not just you know you know sports and esports. I wanted to be the bridge between you know a human and the bridge was gaming. The gaming that brought like in any other world, when would we have ever? When would a normal person like me ever have the opportunity to talk to like a pro player? You know what I'm saying? Like never again. In gaming though, that offers itself up for that sort of like mm-hmm. opportunity, and that's what I always wanted to do. Like eventually, I'm gonna have fucking actors in here and shit. Like mm-hmm. hey, Brad Pitt one day. You will. You definitely <laughs> Ooh, will. That'd be you awesome. Definitely will. <laughs> um, 
Awesome. So let, let me ask you a little bit about your your early early times in Canada, right? Because a football player coming from Canada, like it's becoming a little bit more of the norm. But man, yeah. like, yeah, man, um, how was that? Because there's what's the national sport in in Canada? The national sport. I always say it's hockey, but I guess it's not hockey. I think mm. it's like rugby or something. But um. I'm, we're going to go with hockey. Today. Yeah, hockey. This one, yeah, like yeah. yeah, hockey's a good sport to go with for the national sport. But, man, yeah, it's hard, man. You know, um, opportunity. There's not a lot of opportunity for football, um, you know, coming out of Canada. Uh, we play Canadian rules, so it's different rules, different end zones, you know, like a bunch of different. <clears throat> you say different end zones. What do you mean? So our end zone, it's 20 yards. Yeah. Where we got a 10-yard end zone here. And, you know, like for a quarterback, it's a lot easier to throw a touchdown oh, yeah. deeper into an end zone. So, I mean, there's there's different things when it comes to, you know, being recruited out of Canada. Um, and I, I think there's a lot of talent, a lot of talent, um, you know, especially in the city where I'm from. We're kind of a border city uh, right across uh, the border from Detroit, Michigan. What city is that? Detroit. No, yeah, what city? Oh, Windsor, Ontario. And, um, yeah, I mean, we got a lot of talent out there, you know, all throughout Ontario, Toronto, and then the rest of Canada, of course. But, you know, um, we're kind of that overlooked city and – I guess Province Toronto is getting more on the map now because of Drake yeah. and, you know, what's going on with the basketball players that are coming out of there. But um, definitely, <clears throat> you know, an overlooked city as far as football talent. So, uh, you know, just hopefully, you know, we can get uh, a lot more people to go up there and, and see the talent we got and bring them to the United States, yeah. you know, uh, you know, have this sport open doors for them because it's opened many doors for me. I love what it's done for me and my family and my friends. And, you know, um, I, just, I just I just want everybody to experience everybody that should be able to experience that to experience that from canada yeah you know i, I always <clears throat> think about that as well like the, the the amount of humans on earth and the amount of talent i mean just natural gifted talented people that grow up to be big dudes like you mm -hmm. and given the right opportunity given the right you know training they can become a professional athlete but a lot of people don't get this right i mean if you if you go to spain for example there's a dude just as big as you yeah. with the right opportunity he could be just as athletic and and have you know sort of the same but but they don't have that sort of path to pro for football players right so if you are born you know if if, if you're naturally selected to be a football player you know coming coming out of your mom's womb but you're not in the right country, you don't get to play fucking football, right? Yeah, yeah. You get to play whatever, you know, is there. Soccer, you yeah, know what I'm saying, for, yeah. in, in Spain. Or football. Um, the real football, some would say, you know. But it makes it difficult. So you you got you got lucky on, on, on two things. At least you were like neighboring city or neighbor, yeah, neighboring cities to, to yeah. an opportunity like that. And is, it, is scouting super difficult in, in situations like that? Yeah, I mean, like... <clears throat> As an American coach, you don't want to go to Canada to recruit. I, mean, I can see that. You yeah. Know? Is, um, is it anti-American? Do you think that that's a, a, a thing that goes through their head? <laughs> like, I guess maybe not anti-American, but they're probably thinking, you know, the talent level is probably not, you know, up to par in okay. Canada. And so it's not a like, I'm American, so I got to pick American sort of thing. Yeah, I mean, I would hope not. Even though the CFL, they kind of do something where it's like, I think it's like 80% of their players have to be Canadian. Yeah. You know, they don't do that over here, you know, if um even though there's not a percentage of canadians yeah. that are going to come over here and play but um maybe they would make that rule if there's more people in canada than there was in the united states but yeah. either way um you know it's a it's just it's a crazy thing i think i think it could be it, it could be bigger in canada um with with better recruiting um and you know better opportunities but you know that's just that's just what it is right now and uh you know I'm trying to do my positive uh, over there for the change. And, you know, and we got other players around the league that are trying to do the same. So hopefully, you know, we can make an impact in that area. Um, you know, and if not, then, uh, you know, we're, we're just going to have to uh, see see what the CFL can do. Yeah. Let me let me ask you this. When you were, let's say, in sixth grade, yeah. right, you went to a Catholic school. Yeah. I got questions about that because I also went to a Catholic school. Well, how tall were you when you were in sixth grade? So I went to the Catholic school when I was in high school, but when okay. I, but when uh in sixth grade, shoot, man, I don't know. I was probably I, I don't how know. how how tall are you today? How big are you? I'm like, six four. I'm six two four. six four two eighty five right now. Six four, bro. It's like you got me by like an inch or two, um, and uh, not a couple of pounds. I mean that too. <laughs> 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 yes. um, all right, so you were so you were tall already. You know, at, at that point, you you knew like you you're like I'm a I'm a different sort of human. You know, my my life is gonna be different. You know, from from like I can't yeah. ride in a plane like normal people yeah. can. Yeah, I mean at that at that time, you know, yeah, I was definitely, 
I was definitely thinking, you know, yeah, I have, I'm, I'm bigger than everybody around me. So, you know, I'm, something's going on, you know, I, I, I might be able to play some sports or, yeah. you know, do something uh, and use this to my advantage. Uh, you know, I was, I guess, smart enough to, to know that at that time. Yeah. For sure. Um, that had to have been awesome though. You know, being able to, you know, uh, I just saw on Twitter that, uh, and both of us are married, so this doesn't apply to us, but uh, they're going to have a, uh, a height verification check or something on Twitter. I guess people lie about their height. I don't know. Why, why do people lie about their height, Maddie? You're a young dude shaking his head. He doesn't know. Um, is the internet people are gonna you know the, the people are gonna find out that you're not you know like there's gonna be yeah. the opportunity for people to meet you and realize hey you're not six three bro yeah i never had to worry about that yeah. but <laughs> you know i i, I can see it man you know if you're if you're the in the five yeah the the, the young fives you know it's a uh, it's probably scary to tell tell a girl you yeah. that's five five and you're five five that you're five five you know you might, yeah. might want to say five eight stretch it a little bit yeah i will say this though i i've I don't know if it's because of when I grew up, like 80s, 90s, that, you know, that height to me or height to any of my friends, you know, I have a friend of mine, his name is Carlos. He's like, he's like short, but not as short as my other friend, Kenny. And they both pulled chicks, you know, they've yeah. never had a problem pulling chicks. It's all, I've always said, if you can make a girl laugh, if you can treat her nicely and uh, you have, uh, you know, above average confidence, mm -hmm. the world is your oyster. Like that doesn't like height only goes so far. This is probably for another conversation, but you know what's killing that? It's the social media and the phones. I'm like young men, like don't even know how to talk to women anymore. You yeah, know? <clears throat> and I mean it's a shame, but you know, like dates really don't happen. I mean, it, it all happens, or like communication happens. You could find the girl that you were beside in yeah. two seconds on the internet. You yeah, know? so I mean, like it's just the yeah. and, and I've proven that theory. Okay. Like I, yeah, I have. Well, I, I mean, I grew up in the eighties, nineties, when they were, well, in the nineties. I'll say the nineties because yeah. that's when you know the, my teens and uh, nineteen twenty. So, I, I I know what it's like to have to go up to a girl and mm -hmm. tie, you know, break the ice by saying hello. Yeah, I know that. So when I started this gaming thing, and I had you know players and and teammates of mine that were like super super young and grew up in the age of the internet, have this stardom about them. I told them. I don't think you can pick up a girl if you don't have your Twitter account open to show how many followers you have. My boys were good. And mm -hmm. I don't know if it's because of this and the camera that allowed them to be so good at speaking, but we proved that at a bar and uh, I won't say which one of them, but they all had verbals, man. They all went out to do their thing and, and, and they were- Spit game. Yeah, they they spat the game. Yeah, I'm they telling did. you, that used, to be, that used to be like an actual thing, like <coughs> go spit some game, but that is yeah. no longer a thing. I mean, no, I, and and, and I'm, the, what, the problem there, bro, and I'm sure you'll agree, is the fact that women would still appreciate a confident so. person showing that you know that appreciation. Now, the, the good thing nowadays, though, is that luckily, you know, as as society gets a little bit more caught up with common sense, you know, men and women are equal. So now a lot of women are are doing the the thing to the max. I just go back in time and I'm like, man, I would have been hollered at nonstop if <laughs> if the if the eras were reversed. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Oh man, You're just not kidding. the only one. All right, so Catholic school, right? Was it? Well, I'm gonna tell you how my Catholic school was, and then you tell me if yours was the same. Now, I went to Catholic school from kindergarten all the way to sixth grade, so maybe it, it won't apply. But I went to a convent called Tercer Centenario, the third, the third century, um, century, not century, or century, maybe. I don't know. I don't know. Direct translation, no good here. <laughs> um, but it was bad for me, dude, because I've yeah. always been a little bit of a troublemaker. So not only was I getting my ass beat at home when I did bad grades, but it's at school. I remember clear. I can tell you three different times when I got my. I can't tell you exactly what what years I was on in, but I got my ass beat by the nuns, bro. Like more than three times, and I'm talking about they like maybe not child abuse, but like enough to where you're like you shouldn't touch. It's not your kid, you know. If you mm -hmm. want to, don't mm -hmm. be a nun if you want to have kids. You know what I'm saying? But this one lady, I don't remember. I wish I remember her name, and you know, God bless her if she's passed. But dude. She grabbed me. I had longer hair back then, but she grabbed me from right here. And she did one of these, bro. Like, literally, my head was like that. And in my head, my neck didn't hurt as much as, like, them pulling the side oh, of my hair. hair. Yeah. But the other time, I, could, I, I always like making people laugh, right? And me and this other dude were just laughing. We were crying. We were laughing so hard. The lady or the, the nun made us go to the front of the, of the, of the school or the, of the class and made us put our hands out like this. And with the meter rule, bro, Wham, five times, pop, 
I was like, five times? I'm like, three? What happened to three? How do we get to five like that, right? Yeah, like, five. what happened to three? Uh, what's it like that for you again? <laughs> Dude. <laughs> that was crazy, man. Um, no. no, not at all. <laughs> Did you have uh, both uh, <clears throat> uh, teachers? Like, were the teachers uh, in the in the service? No, man. The, honestly, I, um, we had religion class, you know, and we learned <clears throat> my first religion class, you know, in the ninth grade, grade nine, yeah. obviously say in Canada, um, you literally learned every religion, you know. Oh, shit. But we also, <clears throat> you know, ha I think we had like a mixture, a mixing, a melting pot full of kids. You yeah. know, we had uh, different religions, um, d you know, different ethnicities or whatever yeah. um you know black white you know chinese spanish um you know L lebanese we had uh 30 of our school was probably uh muslim mm -hmm. you know um and we had mass but <clears throat> to be honest like mass over there wasn't you know like a traditional catholic church like i've seen some traditional catholic churches and how they you know do mass where you know we're in we're in the gym and we do mass and you know, they do the, you know, everything that is involved with mass, but, you know, we're just students in, in the stands and we, and we listen and, you know, we pray and then we kind of just go Never about our day. Never thought about that, dude. Yeah. But I mean, we, uh, it's, it, it was, it was literally, I guess a relaxed, um, mm -hmm. it, it wasn't private like they are over here. Um, and yeah, I mean, we had friends from all over the place, yeah. you know, and, and, it, it, we just kind of we we vibed and it, it was good. It was it was it was kind of like a public school over here, and I mean it was it was all good. I mean to know different cultures and it actually helped me grow as like a man and as a as a person. Yeah, you know to you know be able to you know <clears throat> not be judgmental towards you know one yeah. race or the other, and you know it's just I got boys from all over the place and it's it's amazing now. You I know, never thought other. about that, dude. Because when I think Catholic school, I just think that. But I'm mean, a Catholic school in this day and age maybe can i mean obviously can work there's there's still they still exist but in my you know going to school in mexico there was nothing but catholics i mean mm -hmm. you know majority 99 percent of the of mexico is uh, catholic <clears throat> never thought about that dude that you know when what happens if you're if there's no other school around your area except for this catholic school and you're muslim if you're you know even a christian you know like that's yeah. that's a that's cool you know canada has always been known to to uh to be very forward thinking man in everything like absolutely like pull is is let me ask you this as a canadian i've asked pomage this before pomage as you know he's also canadian um is it are you guys really like super super duper polite yeah man <clears throat> i mean most people over there are extremely nice you know and um i mean obviously you get your your odd your eyeball whatever you know the people that want to act up a little bit but um yeah <laughs> 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 no man and, and that's the thing you know like um even even people that come from other countries yeah. over there um you know they're they're just great human beings you know like i I'm not saying over here they're not, yeah. um, but, you know, you can definitely tell a difference. Yeah. And, I mean, even when you go to another country, you know, I went to the Dominican Republic and, you know, that Canadian flags posted everywhere. And I'm like, what's going on? Like, do you guys like Canada? He's like, I love the Canadians. The yeah. Canadians are amazing. Yeah. And then we asked the other question and it was a different answer. But, you know, yeah. my wife's American. My daughter's American. You know, I've got American family now. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I love America. <clears throat> but, you know, obviously there's, you know, different yeah. views on certain things from different places around and i think yeah the canadian people are extremely polite yeah that's all I, I wish i would have grown up in a in a place where i had like this melting pot of everything because understanding human humanity you know that we're not all i mean growing up in mexico the way that i did we're all like cookie cutter this is what we all are mm -hmm. anyway let's uh all right so you're <laughs> in high school right you're uh did you did you how did you choose between football and I mean, you could have played rugby, and if, if rugby is actually the national sport in Canada, or basketball, dude, like basketball is massive in Canada. How did you yeah, choose? Man. Well, um, <clears throat> I didn't choose between them. You know, obviously the high school seasons, it's football, basketball, track. So I did football, basketball, track. Um, I, I, I I chose between football and volleyball. I, I played football, basketball, and I figured what other sport was at that time, and, yeah. and track and soccer. You know, so I, I, I chose – football basketball on track and uh you know just kind of try to do my thing with them and uh, i had great coaches uh great people around me um support system it was it was all amazing and um 
yeah, man, I, I learned a lot in every single sport. I just decided, you know, football was the way I wanted to go, um, you know, into college. And, um, I mean, I, you know, the rest is kind of history. I just now, worked did, with that. Did, did you get recruited? Like, did, did, uh, did scouts come to your high school to, like, watch you play? Or did you submit an application? Video? I mean, I guess it's easier now, right, with the internet to be able to yeah. just submit footage of, uh, of, like, football highlights, right? Yeah. I mean... I think there was a little bit of that back then. Like, um, I forget what websites it was, but you were like a certain star recruit um, that you can go on there. But yeah, we uh, I had my coaches, my basketball coach and my football coach, just kind of help me with a, a film, kind of combine the both, and um, we just sent CDs, burned CDs, mm -hmm. you know, off uh, off to colleges, and <clears throat> knowing that you know most coaches are gonna grab them, look at them, toss them in the same pile. But, you know, hope, hoping that, you know, a couple of coaches actually take a look. Yeah, and, or at least some interns. Yeah, right? yeah. I mean, and luckily um, the intern at uh, Boise uh, did and an intern at Michigan State did and um, showed them both to the D-line coach and a couple of coaches there. And uh, the D-line coach, uh, Coach Rakowski from Boise, came down, <clears throat> watched me play a basketball game, and um, – he offered me, they offered me right away. And then Michigan State, uh, I went up to their camp, their football camp, and they offered me right away. But <clears throat> unfortunately, you know, I couldn't clear the clearinghouse. Grades weren't great. So I had to uh, take the junior college route. And, you know, luckily, which was an amazing blessing in my life, I, I went off to Bakersfield College in uh, Bakersfield, California. It's a junior college. And yeah. It was dope. Juco. You know what? <clears throat> I, as, as you were telling me that story about not clearing grades, and like I remember not being able to play basketball because I had bad grades, right? And then I, I started thinking about it. I'm like, well, what what did high school really do for me besides teach me very important, you know, skills, you know, social skills, a uh, little bit of math and, and English, right? Like uh, being being uh, being born in Texas, but being an immigrant at the same time because I lived my whole life in Mexico and moving here, not speaking any English. Like one of my main things was like, I was never going to be the guy with the accent. I was never going to be made fun of. That was like my number one fear. And that's why I like put so much time into, into uh, learning the English language, which I still haven't mastered. Um, but I, I think about these situations where like, what have I really used in, 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 in terms of, of, of classes and grades that I would have had to do in order to become who I wanted to become. Right. Like if I, if I'm a, if I'm I'm faculty in any in any school in this day and age with common sense, and I see that you're not an A student, that's not gonna stop me from saying he's not gonna be a fucking football player, mm -hmm. right? You know what I'm saying? Like there's there's I think that education just globally in in unless you're gonna be a scholar and unless you're gonna be like very specific things that obviously need schooling like doctors, obviously you need to go through through the curriculum. But if you're gonna be anything other than that, like I don't I, I think that there needs to be some sort of Training. break you yeah. know what i'm saying yeah because uh, i mean like look i i homeschool my daughter one of the main reasons is because i hate it jude and i my wife and i hated the way that, that that we were taught in school and we're very lucky in in the fact that you know with with my with my personality and with her personality that we were able to build a business out of out of whatever but if in high school i wasn't if in life I wouldn't have been able to start my own business because I wasn't an A student, I would. Where would I be today? You know. Yeah. So I think I think that as as society, as, yeah, society evolves. I think that the grades and the schooling system, the grading system, something has to happen there in order to like truly identify who's going to be what. You know, yeah. like if my daughter wants to grow up and be a lawyer, right? Why don't we fast track that sort of education? Like, let her skip the 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 science and the biology well biology obviously but the, the science and and the quantum physics bullshit right and let her go straight into into law um man but can, can you imagine like look look at look at the look at what that i mean obviously it ended up well for you 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 uh you transcended you know whatever it is that you needed to but imagine if if bakersfield had the same sort of rules like yeah. what would have happened to you you wouldn't have had the same success that you have today because of what 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 did you fail in, in high school and how do you use <clears> it in everyday life yeah, man. Um, I, I agree with you. You know, uh, obviously a lot of kids, even when I was going into college, I didn't know really what I wanted to be. So that could be a little hindrance on, <clears throat> I guess, going about it that way. But I do think, yeah, if, if, an, if a student knows what they want to do, then the direction needs to be a lot better and easier for that, <clears throat> for that student. Because I mean, to be honest, truthfully, I don't believe in college. Like I don't, 
when it's time for my daughter <clears throat> to go to college, yeah. I'm I'm gonna give her the option. Yes, you know, I'm with you. You're you're gonna you can you can go this route or this route. The, the college route, yeah, you can do that because yeah, you know, that's what that's that's the norm. That's yeah. what kids do, and obviously, you want that college experience. You know, hopefully, we're still blessed in in that area to be able to just send her off to college. But yeah. I also want to give her the option. You know, this is the way you know life is gonna be, and what you should how you should probably go about it. How I think, at least and be an entrepreneur and, you know, and do exactly what you want to do and direct it yourself, you know, yeah. do it, go that way. But, you know, <clears throat> I think college is great. I think, um, yeah, I mean, if, if there's a lot of, there's a lot of athletes out there that could, could be millionaires, you know, from a sport or, or, or anything else, but, you know, because of something happening in high school and yeah. that wasn't and even in college, yeah, too. Uh, even, even if it wasn't, they're not smart enough. It was just, yeah. they were, you know, bad you know they they made a, a couple of bad choices yeah. but and now they can't go to college because of those bad choices you know it just it just leads the the student or the athlete you know that way instead of you know bringing them where we want them to go and yeah i mean there's a it's crazy man dude look, <laughs> even if you're a co even if you are all if you, even if you already did everything you busted your ass with with uh with not being a good student and you still bust your ass, you got the grades, you got to college. Imagine being in college, right? Not being a good student, not wanting to be a, a student, okay? You don't know what you want to do in life. You don't know, you haven't cho cho chosen that. But then on top of that, they, and I say they, I mean every college in America, like they exploit athletes like fucking animals, dude. And, and, and then on top of that, they have the nerve to put that on top of them as well. No, you can't get a sponsorship. No, you can't get, and so they want them to work, get injured, Mm -hmm. And then drop out of college, another fucked, right? Like the the amount, like the the collegiate system is like the one of the most annoying things in my personal life, and I don't even have any stake in it, any stake in it. And I'm with you on the on the on the fact. Jude and I have always said we're gonna give her the option, right? We're gonna let set aside X amount of money for you to pick to go to college or choose your 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 own business. Mm -hmm. But even then, I feel super super conflicted on the fact that I'm gonna give her money to go mm -hmm. party. <laughs> so I, yeah. you know, par party with your own money, Liv. Uh, Please let let me spend this on something I've been, else. I've been man. thinking about it. my daughter's nine months old, and I'm yeah. thinking about it already. You it know? changes everything, man. Yeah, yeah. I I, I don't want to be sexist, but especially when it's a girl, man. Like if I had a boy, I know that I'd be like, and 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 I know I'm wrong in this. I'm a, I'm a I'm a I'm a I'm a primal man in this. Okay, I just I know that if I if, if you know roles were sorted worse and Liv was a, as a boy, I would treat her so much differently than I do that she's my daughter, and that's super unfair. And I'm working on that, but. It's it's different because you 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 sort of want to give them all the wings that you would give your own you know your son if you had one. And I do that. I catch myself being tough on her. I catch myself like not cutting her any breaks. But at the same time, like I, I think I treat her harder than I do if she was a boy. Sometimes, man, you know, because it's it's the it's the age of the of the woman, right? And it's only going to mm -hmm. get better for them. Like the opportunities, like. It, equal pay the fact that it's not even let's not get into politics bro but the fact that equal pay is still not a fucking thing like that's super bullshit dude and, and it affects you even more when when you have a daughter which yeah. again is unfair yeah but man see that you know and that's where <clears throat> obviously i'm gonna rely on myself but you know my wife yeah uh my mom you know i have a single mother you know um from windsor ontario young black lady, you know, she did, she did it, you know, she did it. She, she, ne she never made excuses, yeah. you know? Um, she always told me, don't you ever say, uh, because I'm black or, you know, blah, 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 that she never, ever wanted to hear that come out of my mouth. You know, she was always, you know, stern, hardworking, you know, she, um, never took a day off, you know, she never had an excuse for, for work or anything like that. And, you know, she was I, just, the way she raised us was, was amazing. It was hard and she did it, you know, majority by herself. And for, for, for that to have, you know, at my back, you know, um, and then my wife to have at my back and my brother, I know like <clears throat> with all those different personalities coming into my daughter's life, I know she's going to be good. You yeah. know? And I know she's going to be able to take on, you know, whatever she needs to take on in the yeah. world. And, and that's, that's what we need. I, I know the way you're talking, you're going to have your daughter ready for, you know, to be a strong oh, yeah. individual, you know, going into her adult life. And, and yeah. it's, I mean, that's, it's, it's important for us, man, because I, you know, I think about it all the time. I think about, you know, I don't think that college is going to be like a major thing in in the, like the next five years. I'm man. hoping it's not, dude, because it's it is. I mean, money. Pit. I don't I don't really understand. Yeah, it's money, dude. Like yeah. a billion dollar a year industry just on March Madness alone. Okay, that's a billion. And guess how much the athletes fucking see of that? Zero. So yeah. 
it, it, for me, it, it makes, I live, I live in a world of common sense, or I try to live in a world of common sense, and I try to see both sides of the argument at every single corner. Every, like Sometimes when I'm arguing with my, with my wife, I'm also like, in my head, I'm like, all right, she should be saying this to me instead of like what she's saying, right? Like I'm, I'm, uh, that, that's the type, of, the type of dude I am. So when I see these injustices, it makes, like, people aren't born to be students sometimes, you know? People right. are, are sometimes God gifted to have like, to be built a certain way, not only that, but to have the, the coordination and the abilities that, that you're given. Because there's a lot of big dudes like you that just have two left feet and motion sickness. Yeah. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Just yeah, like, they yeah, just can't, yeah. they can't put two and two together. <laughs> uh, so anyway, sorry. So you, you the, the dude came out, uh, obviously, uh, Boise and Michigan, you couldn't make it. You went to Bakersfield. Uh, did you finish, like, the, the did you go the, the whole thing or did you? Yeah. Um, so I did my two years at uh, Bakersfield. <clears throat> you know, had a, an amazing experience there. I met my wife there. You know, I uh, met a great family out there um, that I call my family now. Mm-hmm. And then I uh, went off to Boise. Um, <clears throat> you know, uh, there, there, you know, just – had three crazy roommates, uh, played on the football team. Uh, those roommates are, you know, three of my best friends now. Well, two of them were already, we, we went to high school together. Yeah. And, um, you know, we just, uh, I played ball and then, you know, 2012 got drafted to the Cowboys third round. Um, been a blessing ever since. I mean, it's been a, ble- I mean, my whole life's been a blessing, you know, Bro, I've you've no been in the league but, for seven years. Yeah. Right? So I played seven seasons. Yeah. Jesus dude. Yeah, man. That's good. Well, listen, man. I mean, you you're doing all the right things. Let, let me let me ask you. This is. I mean, I don't know if you can answer this even, but obviously with the with the head injuries and the post, you know, the post traumatic, you know, injuries that happen from from being a football player. Like, what what can what can the league do to like help people with that, man? Because I think that that's like priority number one. Because it's it is. No matter what people say, they could call baseball America's pastime as much as they want, but it's football, dude. It's football. Football is America's pastime. Um, what what are they what are they doing, man? To 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 help? Is there anything? Do you guys get any like? Well, yeah. I mean, I think I think the NFL and um, you know just the game of football. You know, we, we do as much as we can. Mm-hmm. Uh, the rules are obviously changing, and it's changing for you know the better um, safety of yeah. players. You know, I know uh, some hard hitting safeties out there. You know yeah. that that can hit a wide receiver and you know, coming across the middle if they really if they really wanted to and they could knock them out take them out the game but you know obviously the rules are stopping that from yeah. happening um you know helmets are getting better you know i just i got my new helmet this year and it's yeah. it's amazing but you know obviously you so run just, that risk this is also an audio i was i was when i was asking like is the nfl doing anything <clears throat> the the knock that you heard i have a helmet on the uh, on the table um, and that's what I, that's what we're referring to so you got your new helmet and it's different than the than the one that you that you've yeah, been using yeah so i mean they change it. They uh, they've they've upgraded you know helmets ever since I've been in the league. Ever since I started playing football, you know I used to play with the we had little circle pads in yeah. there, and you know that's the cushion that you had in your head. And now they got shock absorbers inside the helmets. They got um, I mean triple layers of cushion. Your cushion is shock absorbing. So um, a lot of the a lot of the scary part is you know anything pretty much shoulders and up or yeah. neck and up. You know yeah. you don't want to. As a football player, you know the the scary things that you're thinking about that you you know you pray that never happen is the neck and and your head and mm-hmm. um, you know those are unfortunately the risk you run playing the game. Um, you know it's a it's a scary game. There's not there's not getting any there's not getting past that. You know it's it is what it is. But you know um, that's why. You know, I, I play with a bunch of modern day warriors. You yeah. know, we're just yeah. some gladiators. That's exactly what you are, bro. Yeah, yeah. And and, and, and honestly, um, it shows. You know, you can't. We could we could play a game on Sunday, and we're we're in pain until Saturday. You know, and um, you know, our bodies just take this beating, and I, I forget what they like eat, like pretty much equaled it out to, but it's like a, a car accident. You know, every, every like Sunday. a pretty serious car accident every Sunday. Season. You know, so I mean, like. We take this, the, the, our bodies take a toll, you know, and, uh, but that's, that's the risk we run. Seven years. What, what do you, are you, do you feel anything? Are you allowed to say it to, to, to not oh, let I the mean, opposition know? Yeah. I mean, I, <clears throat> my body, my body obviously is, is holding up. You know, I, I've, I've been through bad years where I've, i my second year, I completely ruptured my Achilles. Um, third year tore my, uh, shoulder, fourth year tore my other shoulder, you know, so I've been through some things where, you know, it's taken some time to get back and, you know, but, you know, my body's holding up. Obviously I go through the the pain um, and I'm going to be in pain and I'm probably going to be in pain for the rest of my life. Yeah. But, you know, I always, I always joke with my friends and, you know, they say, you know, 
like if they're how many years is this for you and i'm like man it's like eight but you know my body feels like it's like 17 you yeah. know but um yeah i mean that's just what it's what i have to go through man it's a it's been like that you know forever um you know you talk to the old heads uh, i don't want to even call them old heads that's disrespectful yeah. but you know you talk to some of the older players you know around uh that come around the star and you know and you and you just and you just get to talk to them about you know how their bodies feel and stuff and they're banged up but you know they they played through uh you know some some of them you know say they played through a, wa- a lot worse than us you know like broken ribs you know i mean i've played through some tears and stuff like that but you know those guys played through some some crazy stuff and you know obviously it shows on some of them and it's unfortunate but you know maybe that's how it's going to go but it's the game i picked yeah you know i love I was it just gonna say that's i love it but um would you man. if you had a son would you let him play football <clears throat> If I had a son, I would I would uh, do my best to direct him mm. away from football. Yeah, um, I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't push it like too hard away from football yeah, because so. I know it's once you once you get it, your hands on it, it's it's something you, it's not easy to just put down. So, um, you know, I'll try and maybe find a way not so he doesn't get into into that life. But if he did, I, I know he probably knowing knowing me and yeah. my son, he would probably be a banger, and he'd probably oh, yeah. just want to go out there and. Do what I do. <laughs> yeah, you, you, look, it's it's really tough for a son born to an athlete to not follow in their in their father's footsteps. You know what I'm saying? So I I, I get it. That's why that's why I'm saying like, and I don't think that the football should be the way that. I mean, if 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 I'm the NFL, I'm doing my damnness every single day, spending as much money as I need to on research and and technology to make helmets better, to make you know changing the rules is, is the is the right step. But that I, my, my personal opinion, that's not enough. You need to you need. To, I mean, look, who am I? Right? I I, I barely watch. Um, the bears play as 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 it is but i i do think that there is that there is definitely still room for football in the future and you know the league's number one priority should be protecting the players at all time and they're the, they're the show bringers man and mm-hmm. and it's crazy so you know on, the, on that topic of, of the league and, and the owner and obviously you know the pass if you can't answer these but i had a question about like athletes and where the, what they what they are what they're what they're allowed to do as an athlete, right? Like in, yeah. in, in, in gaming and, and the new world that we're seeing in esports, like the, we treat players as their own business entity and we, we, we try to support that as much as we can. So, you know, when retirement comes, they walk, you know, they're, they're, they're good. They're, mm-hmm. They know the skills needed in order to continue to do what they love, which is play video games, you know, maybe not a professional level, but still for, from an entertainment standpoint. Yeah. I mean, for the most part, I, you know, from what I know, uh, you know, I believe we're just, we're we're free to to market ourselves Mm -hmm. um you know the way we want to market ourselves i think i think it gets um you know into that um you can't do that range when we start using maybe our our team logos a little bit too much or even using them at all or you know anything that has to do with uh, the cowboys you know other than tyrone crawford you know i think if we're if we're using tyrone crawford you know our numbers or, or whatnot i think that's okay but uh, you know, once we start touching the logo and getting into the logo and using it for our own, you know, personal yeah, benefit. That makes fair. Yeah, fair. I mean, it is. You know, the Jones family worked extremely hard to get the star where it's at, and you know, that's that's their star. You know, I, you know, it's my, it's I guess it's my responsibility to get Tyrone Crawford and my brand where I, where I wanted to go. Even though I'm not the big on, oh, I'm going to use Tyrone Crawford as a brand. Yeah, I kind of want to, you know, play this game. <clears throat> And then kind of just fall off the map and just, you know, go and do my own personal business things with my friends and my projects. family. And yeah, you know, just trying to be an entrepreneur myself. Uh, you know, I always uh, had this goal. I mean, this this thing I wanted to do is take, you know, a little bit of the earnings I have, you know, made from and a really, really tiny, small portion of it and just try and see what I can do with that, you know, after my career, just to, just to challenge myself. Yeah. And, um, you know, but yeah, I want to do that. I don't want to use, you know, Tyrone Crawford. Um and and if you ask anybody around me, I don't really think that big of myself anyways. I'm not, you know, I don't think like, oh, uh, I can use, I'm, I'm some superstar. When people call me celebrities, I can't stand it. I, yeah. I, a celebrity, I can't stand it. I don't even, I don't even like, I don't like it. I, it's just not, it's just not <laughs> it's me. It's not but, you. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I just want to, you know, go into, you know, doing, seeing what I can do, you know, for myself and what, what I can do, you know, without what football has given me. But I do appreciate the game and what it's done for me and for my family. You know, I've, I've lived out my dreams and 
um, can, can continuing to and uh, yeah. putting my daughters in good places. So, well, I'll, t- I'll tell you one thing: if if you could, I mean, at any, you should start a podcast. But you're really good at talking. I do this shit every week, and you're really like I can tell who's not comfortable on the mic, and you know who has, you should totally start a, a, a podcast, a, a oh, player yeah. podcast. I mean, think about the access that you have to like superstars, and they don't have to wear the logo or have you know anything. It's just football talk, man. Mm-hmm. I think that I think that you know the the age of the entrepreneur is like has has been here for the past like three years more than anything because. Because there's like the celebrity almost uh, look at Gary Vee, right? Super, super known for being an entrepreneur and may, yeah. has made it sort of like a like a like an aspiration for a lot of people to do. And it, it, given the opportunity, you should. The, the problem that I see in today's day of entrepreneurship is the fact that the people who don't necessarily need to go the extra mile are going the extra mile, right? Mm-hmm. Like. Uh, I, I, I want to see more people who are stuck in the day-to-day be an entrepreneur. Those are the, the, the people that need to get out of the rat race are the ones that should be more passionate about entrepreneurship and doing it like after, after like uh, every day, right? Every single day that, that I'm on, I see, you know, people that comment on my videos, people that comment on, on the pictures. Like those are the people that I want to, to, to shake their heads the, the hardest and be like, yo, just fucking spend an hour to an hour and a half after work and before work working on something just fucking think of anything and, and then work on it like right now i'm pushing my wife hard as hell to to get her to do anything with decorations an incredible interior decorator she hasn't she doesn't do anything for that. like she wants to too she just doesn't know how to and i'm trying to help as much as i can but like i'm pushing her super hard to do this thing on on like on dogs she loves we have seven dogs she loves dogs and i'm seven pushing dogs. her so i'm getting this 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 uh this logo made for her uh for her for her uh for her thing that she's doing so you know little by little i like I, I want that sort of thing to happen to everybody if you find a pay if you like quilting make a write something do something in that field to, to yeah. do it just start and see where it goes That's if true. anything else you're gonna have a good time doing it because it's your passion yeah yeah I, I think it's rewarding too like even if you if if you were just messing around and wrote a business plan on whatever quilting whatever you whatever you think you're good at or you know whatever you think you can pursue something if you just wrote a business plan and and you looked at it i think it's rewarding to see you know you can write a business plan and then you can take this further you can start a logo and i think like as those steps go you know you see that you can do it and then maybe your mind starts to roam and and get you know further further thoughts on maybe how you can make different things bigger and i yeah man i i think that's why that's the that's the goes back to the college thing man yeah i i, I just i think th- everybody should try and be you know entrepreneurs and i think with the with that mindset um you know opportunities are endless man and and, and funds that's not an excuse it can come from anywhere you know yeah. the business plan you could you can go out door to door and knocking and collect money and create a yeah. create your business you know i, I got that's I hate it when people in my, you know, my city, I, I talk to a lot of kids there. I've, I've run a camp, a football camp there mm-hmm. a lot. And, you know, I talk to a lot of kids and I tell them they can always reach out to me. And, um, you know, some of the talks I talk, I t- we, we talk like this and we talk real and, you know, and then when they reach out to me, we get even deeper real. And I'm just like, Hey man, if you want to do it, do it. Yeah. Like that's the only way you're going to like all these ideas, you know, like they're great, but you got to start it. And if you start it, or if you start, if you focus on one thing and just try and start it, I think you'll be. I think you'll be great and you'll surprise yourself. And I, I think that, I think that for a lot of people, it's just, they just don't do it. You know, and yeah. they, they believe this going through college and getting a, getting a job working for, and, and that's the thing. I see all these people get, go through college and get great degrees and <clears throat> no one wants to hire them after college. And, and that just makes me mad, you know, like I, yeah. I, it sucks because I know how much money and student debt they're in and, and oh. they can barely get a, Think about you starting at a deficit, man. Like yeah. it's it's the worst thing you could do. And, and again, this is all the like the, what's wrong with college, right? This is the yeah. other thing that's wrong with college. Uh, the let's move on from the other yeah, because I, I literally yeah, can talk yeah, about that shit like too, nonstop, yeah. man. Like starting <laughs> well, at a deficit. Not. Yeah. So just give me a second. Let me give a quick shout out to the sponsors. Our first sponsor for the week of the eavesdrop podcast is candid.co a company that sponsored the podcast before so thank you so much for believing in us so much that you came back for seconds and i certainly appreciate it because every single time you come across my desk i sort of think about the 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 smile that i the perfect smile that i don't have as happy as i am with it i do think that they you know some improvements and uh what candid co is if you guys didn't know they are uh you know revolutionizing the way that you can get orthodontic care affordable orthodontic care because if you've ever had a you know problem with your teeth the way that i have um this is this is like perfect for you because it it provides straighter and brighter teeth in an average of six months okay now listen to this part it costs 65 percent less than braces 
who doesn't like a discount like that? 65%. That's crazy. Uh, everything is delivered to your home. White glove customer service in addition to email and phone support. Candid will set up a video call with you to answer any questions you have to walk you through the molding process. Uh, Candid uses only the top of the top orthodontists, uh, and the details are pretty much this as follows. Candid makes clear aligners that are sent directly to your home and are customized specifically for you to straighten your teeth. The aligners fix crooked teeth, crowding, protrusion, and gaps. Okay. Uh, the first step is to purchase their molding kit. I'm sorry, their modeling kit, which will be sent to your home so you can take the impressions of your teeth. The modeling kit starts at 95 bucks. Candid's network of orthodontists reviews your specific case and provides you with a 3D preview of what your treatment will look like, what your treatment will look like. Okay, this isn't just a, a, a thing that they do for everyone. They do specifically for your teeth. Can you imagine if they gave you my mold to your teeth? I mean, this is not the same thing. But having a real orthodontist is the main reason you love Candid. Other companies use dental professionals, whatever that means. And you can also talk to a real person at any time if you have any questions. Uh, Candid treatment is an average of six months and will literally save you thousands of dollars. Thousands of dollars. That's uh, that's something that you can't miss out on. Uh, take advantage of Candid's risk-free modeling kit guarantee. Plus, when you use the dedicated link, Candid code.com forward slash eavesdrop that is candidcode.com forward slash eavesdrop you'll save 25 percent of your modeling kit that is candidcode.com forward slash eavesdrop and get 25 percent off your price of the modeling kit candidcode.com forward slash eavesdrop a third time to make it nice and good our second sponsor this week is Seagate, and Seagate definitely comes second to none when it comes to the hex quarters. If it wasn't for them, uh, a lot of the things that you see here, my ability to work and, and create and provide an atmosphere for some of the people that, that stream out of here uh, is due to them, them supporting uh, not only me, but also the hex quarter in the space in which I do, and especially because I already use them as a company, I already use their products. The external hard drive is, is like clutch. Obviously, as you guys know, I upload vlogs every single day or try to. 99% of the time I upload uh, daily, and consistency is key, and when you're traveling and you don't have the ability to have your laptop be as fast as it is because of the it, it pretty much does the same thing from a laptop that it does from a playstation if i download all of my games that i have on my library to my hard drive to my external hard drive they even make a playstation one to match your playstation it makes the playstation run faster same thing with my laptop if i don't if i save all of the like 4k unlimited gigabytes of footage that i use on a daily basis and put that on my computer it's going to run slow it's going to you know, render slow, and we're not going to be able to upload quickly. Maddie uses it; I use it. It's uh, it's phenomenal. So thank you, Seagate, for not only supporting us from a technical standpoint because we do need it, but also having the faith in me and the Hexquarters to provide the content that we need to provide for you and the fans. Thank you so much. We appreciate you. Let's get back to it. And so, so if you wanted to, right? Like for example, uh, Moon Crickets, right? We 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 talked a little bit before the podcast about you know opportunities that we can do together. Let's say uh, Moon Crickets becomes not necessarily an esports team, but let's say like a like a content creation team around gaming or something like that. Would the NFL have any say in that in that situation? Would they be like, yo, you know, what are you doing? Well, I mean, I hope not. You know, I hope um, you know through the NFL, like players just get support if they want yeah. to start something like this you know I, the nfl has got so much power they're one of the biggest companies in the world yeah so i mean like they got so much power to to change the the people that work for them and and the, the you know the people that have you know been supporting them and you know putting on for their shield for yeah. for time you yeah. know they have they have that power to help them with things like this you know and uh we definitely have the tools you know through the nfl and the nfl pa to to do that players just need to you know kind of find those you know those paths and go and, and use them uh more and so i mean i hope they wouldn't you know make a problem out of it or anything but um you know i, I think there would be more help than there would be a problem unless yeah. unless you know it was yeah, kind of, of you tarnishing the, their name or if you like, yeah absolutely right if you're act if you're streaming for example you're acting like you know like you should and like you, you know that's that's something different i understand that or wearing the logo i like i completely understand the logo thing now that you explain it at first i was just like i wonder why they wouldn't want them to just like wear the logo in everything that you can right like having having a large social media following only benefits the brand right and, and if you're able to say you know, if you're able, if you're the NFL or you're a team, if you're the Cowboys and you're able to pick like certain players who have large social media followings and, you know, give them a, give them the opportunity to, to really, you know, go above and beyond just being a, being a football player or helping them transcend sort of football in their team as a whole. I think that that will only benefit, you know, the, the team because 
you know, you get to you you get another offering out of that. You get a little another form of advertisement that you didn't already have there, and a more, a more organic one. You yeah. know, when the Cowboys speak to their fans, you know, it's amazing. But when a player actually gets to talk to to the fans, that that's something like different, and it's a, it's a little bit more personable. Um, which I personally think that that's like one of the main successes that esports has always had is the fact that. You know, we are able to communicate with with, and obviously the the physical aspect of it is is different, obviously. Um, but having that sort of interaction like doesn't should be encouraged and not like prohibited or, yeah. or, or too many handcuffs on it. Um, That's so so let let me ask you about the moon cricket. So you, you how many like you and who else? Four people. Uh, you know, we're trying to. Five. I mean, we got a team of twelve, pretty much, maybe thirteen guys. Um, and we just, you know, we got um, me, my brother, you know. Uh, my college roommates, two of them, um, my two of my best friends from back home, and you know Anthony Hitchens um, from Kansas City Chiefs. He played with us, a mm -hmm. linebacker, uh, a couple years ago. And um, yeah, I mean, you know, we're just yeah guys that just want to you know chop it up over the mic, uh, talk. We want to stream a little bit, you know, and show you know show the world just how we chop it up, how we talk, and you know how we vibe together over the yeah. game. And you know, again, you know that's a that's a thing. Like, even in college, I would sit in my room, and <clears throat> you know, me and my brother, close, real close, um, and we just chop it up over the game you know yeah. we didn't get on the phone every night but you know we were on the game every night and we were able to stay connected that way you know whereas some siblings that you know they fall further apart yeah you know whereas the game you know kept us close together and that's why you know i i love the game i love what it what it can do you know even with esports you know as far as connecting with the the fans of esports and you guys are you guys are all connected and and when you go to an event it's always like a great event you know fans are interacting with players and players are interacting with fans and it's it's all it's all love there and you know um it's it's fun like everybody loves the game and if 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 you've gotten into it yeah. if you haven't you should cuz it's fun yeah. and it's, and it's what, what's what's good about that in my opinion is is what you just said right like it would. It, it's one thing to stay in touch with your family, but when you go through something together, like yeah. a like a tough loss in a game, you you know you planted the bomb in the wrong side or something. Yeah. Right? Or if you're if you win a, like a, a super clutch moment, like you're not just having a conversation. Like you're going through an experience together every single night, yeah. like several different times. You have this level of camaraderie from a from a teammate standpoint when you're going through. That's 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 what I personally like about it. Like the ability to connect with somebody and going through experiences together. Funny moments, sad moments, mad moments. You know, just you know, yeah. you made a mistake. No, you made the mistake. Having these sort of arguments is also a, a connection that you don't get to because you know, getting angry at, at siblings like it's a it's a it's a natural thing, right? Oh, getting yeah. angry at family members is a, it's a natural thing. So having the opportunities to to get mad at people that you love about that you love that you love about a video game that's that's super connective in oh, my yeah. in my opinion. I, I man, I, I also love the fact that you know like. What I can pull from, you know, football, I can pull it into the gaming world. Like, uh, you know, Coach Marinella, he always coaches me up on being a leader. And, you know, I try my best to be a leader in my room and on my team. And, you know, I, I just, I talk to my guys and I try and pull leadership out of them now, you yeah. know. Coach Marinelli always tells me, you know, what I what I give to you, you got to try and give to others, you know, and just, you know, try and bring bring people up as leaders. And, you know, the guy, like, if you would see it, maybe once I start streaming better, you know, I get a mm -hmm. better streaming system going on. Like, you'll see I try and pull, you know, my guys around me up to be leaders. And yeah. like, all right, Chase, you got this one. All right, Terrence, you got this one now. You know, put put us in the right spot, drop us here, you know, yeah. and, then, and then lead it. Talking you know? black yeah, guy. and then you see these guys, man. They take yeah. leadership roles and they just, they run with it. And yeah. They, they do it, man. And it's, it's good to see. It's good to see, you know, my brother and my brother-in-law, they, they both have a, their own company now, uh, Legacy Line Landscapes. I'm shouting them out right now, but yeah, hell yeah, uh, if you need them, they're in, they're in, uh, the DFW area. But, um, yeah, I mean, th those guys, uh, they, they take this leadership role when, you know, when it's time and, you know, I see it and then, you know, they kind of, you know, roll that over to their company. They're like, all right, you know, we got to, we're going to have to hire somebody, you know, yeah. we're going to have to do this and this and they set plans and, you know, that's kind of how they do it in the game. You know, we play blackout, so we drop here and then we got to, you know, it's, it's, it's uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. you got to stay on the outside of the circle, you know, we, yeah. yeah, so we move and they, and they move as leaders and it's dope to see. It's definitely dope to see. That is cool. We have shot callers too. Like it, we have, uh, it's who's shot calling this time. And it's like, it's for, it's not, like you I know, like something's that. happening. It's where, where there's a, uh, it's diesel or, or hutch like we we assign shot colors they pick where we're landing and yo we're gonna say all right well if we lost it's because you fucking yep, let yep. us through the rope pad yep. so that adds that extra level of like of of, of uh of pressure right to to not only win hit your shots but also it's like well my decision is like gonna affect the entire team um 
I like Blackout a lot, man. It, it quickly became my one of my top three favorite Call of Duty of all time because I don't consider it. Uh, I don't consider Blackout Black Ops Four. Yeah, no. it, it is, but it is. It's a completely different game, and and it's weird because why don't I consider Black Ops S and D? You know, Black Ops Four, but it's it's a, it's it's different. Battle Royale for me, it's like it has been such a reinvigorating like uh, spark for me to love video games that were Call of Duty the way that I did in the past. And yeah, you know, we play other games now, but. Call of Duty for me will always be like the end all be all, man. It changed my life for the better. Um, how often? How often do you guys play? And, and do other people? Do other cowboys play? Yeah, we got uh, shoot, man. On Call of Duty, it's probably thirty percent of the team. For real? Yeah, I'm, I'm just throwing out a number, but like, I, yeah, I would say like thirty percent of the team plays Call of Duty. Um, different systems, maybe some are on Xbox, some are on PlayStation, but yeah, um, yeah, I mean. That's Call what that's what Call hit. of Duty needs to do, man. If 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 Call of Duty was able to do what Fortnite did and allow cross platform play, it'd be the best thing ever to play to to have the ability to play. I don't you know if if, if somebody has an Xbox and I have a PlayStation, like I was able to play with my friends, like I said, in Fortnite from my PC to them on a PlayStation. I did not know that. You didn't know that. I that's one of the reasons that's, that it became as big as it did, bro. That's insane. Yeah, <laughs> you can have your iPad. Yeah, and well, I don't know if it is. Yeah, right. If you can have your iPad and play with your iPad against somebody on PC, let's just say I'll have an iPad, you have a PlayStation, he'll have a PC, and my man over there can have a, an Xbox, and we can play together on the same team. If if Call of Duty is able to do something remotely close to that, I mean, just at least at least xbox and playstation like that will be like i think a, a, a step in the writers charge me the 30 dollars for that hammer Man, god damn it you. you know like it's you. it's it's amazing that is that is insane. personally yeah you know then, then you can finally solve the debate too yeah exactly there's a huge debate i mean i think i, I it, it always has been all right yeah well i mean who do you what do you get think? it done get what do you think what do you, what do you think who wins in that debate before you know I, I went i went and played a little bit of siege mm -hmm. with um one of my teammates david irving uh he, he had me on that for a, a while and you know we would we would play and i'm like man i can't get a hang of this so i was saying the xbox shooter game shooters you know are better than playstation mm -hmm. and then i went to PUBG and i was like okay pub is pub is cool i can i can hang with the pub guys on xbox and then I, and then Call of Duty came and they were killing me at first. So I mean, I, I'm giving it back to PlayStation right now. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's what the pro players are right now. Look, the 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 debate has always been there. It's like I personally like um, Xbox 360 controller. It's the best controller that's ever made. Xbox 360 controller is the best controller that's out there. Like obviously now we have the the Vantage, which is like as close to it as you can get and super comfortable. Do you play with a Vantage? I do not. I don't know what that is. But you don't even know what it is, bro. Scuff Vantage. Oh, a scuff. Yeah, the scuff yeah, vintage. Do you I, have one? Um, see, I, I couldn't I couldn't get used to the scuff, so I kind of put it down for a minute. I'm gonna go back to it though. I'm gonna get yeah, it right. So you do have one though. Yeah, I do have okay. one. Dude, it's life changing. It, it is it is the most life. Give give it a shot and you'll understand why, man. Yeah, imagine being able to jump and oh, yeah. bro, it's, it's 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 the thing. I, Use code hex if you guys want to get a discount. <laughs> um but yeah, so if you if you have one, awesome. If not, I'll do you have a vantage though? The new one? The I, one that has like, the buttons on the side? You're gonna have to show me, man. I got the buttons on the bottom. I know that. All right. Oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna give you mine, and then Scuff will just replace mine. Uh, but oh, I but you it. need to give it a shot, bro, because it's got buttons. So you have these, but then also like you have buttons on the side that you can press with this knuckle just by, and then all the paddles in the back. It might be confusing to yeah. you at first, but just think about PC players get to use all of their digits, man. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? More than we do as, as console players. What Scuff did is that it allowed. So you what to, would you like? What would you hit? What would you hit this? Like, what would that be? Uh, it, it's in, you know in Fortnite you can have your wall or your oh, floor okay, okay. or shit like that. But so in, you just in, pick. Yeah, so you, you pick it. It's it's, it's mappable. I know this sounds like a super super ad for them, but I'm just explaining it to you. Um, <laughs> you could actually set one of the side ones to pick up loot, which is what we what I have mine uh, uh, attached to, so I don't have to like you know yeah. do the, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You, should, you should give it a shot, man. At least at the very very least. I um, will. All right, just a couple more questions and then we're done, bro. What is the uh, what is one of the worst issues that a pro goes through? Like injuries, trades. Like what is one of the things that you just? I mean. <laughs> It's always, you know, it's always crazy. Like you're always watching your job. You know, you always gotta, you always gotta compete. Um, someone's always after your job. Uh, I, I guess that's in every occupation. You know, no matter what, so there's always someone trying to get better into the next, the next point. But you know, um, I mean, they got these young guys out here, and, and they're moving. They're coming in. You know, working out all year, and um, you know, they 
stronger, faster, um, less responsibilities. Yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> Again, going back to a student athlete, that had to be the hardest time in my life. But yeah. you know, um, now that they, they're getting more freedom, it's, you know, they, they, they're done football and they're just working out and just, and just going, you know, yeah. and obviously I got a family. Yeah, you're right. Less, less responsibility. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, I mean, yeah, I mean, but you're also not partying like they're partying. So yeah, you're like, right. You're right. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. I got my one or two a year and, <laughs> but yeah, uh, yeah, man. Uh, then that's, that's one thing. And then, yeah, obviously, you know, you, you don't want to get traded. You don't, you, you want to kind of be in, in a, you know, steady place. And, yeah. uh, I've, I've been fortunate enough to be with the Cowboys, you know, for my whole career. Um, which has been amazing. And, uh, yeah, I mean, just, there, there's, a, there's a bunch of things, man. It was, just like any job, I guess, you yeah. know, just, uh, just, just trying to keep your head down work. And, you know, I'm, I guess my career would be my, my sacrificial period. You know, I'm my head down. I'm, I'm all hundred percent focused in on, you know, or not a hundred percent, but you know, I can't be a hundred percent, but you know, I'm, I'm all the way as much as I can focused in on football and what I need to get done. And, you know, that's, it's going to pay, it's going to pay blessings. So, I mean, that's just, that's just what I try and do. Um, you know, until, until I'm done football and then and I move that, you know, sacrifice into something else, mm -hmm. uh, you know, football is what it is. And I can't really think I guess about it's, it. Yeah, it's like anything else in any other job, having somebody coming after your job every single day and having the ability to do so if they, you know, politic their way in some in some situations. Yeah. Like that that also raises your level of, of competition, right? It, you know, mm -hmm. all, all competition is good competition, in my opinion. Um, yeah. I mean, I don't know, dude. I, 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 I always say that being an athlete is like the the ultimate like the best job that anyone could ever have in the world man having like the 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 coliseum just fucking yelling for you when you do something amazing like it's got to be one of the most addictive like i'm addicted to that and i don't experience that yeah. like i just in my head i'm like oh my god it's gotta be the fucking best thing ever it's dope yeah it's dope definitely you know just <clears throat> you know and and when you're at at&t and you, you you're you're just looking around and amazing bro just whatever it is, 190,000 people there, whatever they get up in there. I mean, it's, it's insane. You just look around and you're like, wow, is like, this is, this is, I'm here. Like I, I really do this every, you know? every Sunday you get, you have every to experience Sunday. that sort of like, holy shit, pinch me. Look at this every Sunday. And I'm, I mean, my first experience, we, uh, when I was at Boise, we played Virginia tech. Oh, and, uh, that was the biggest game I've been in to that point. And I was like, this is crazy. Like I was nervous beyond belief. Yeah, like, it affected you for yeah. sure. Yeah, and then my first game in the league, uh, we went up to New York, and that was huge. And you know, uh, Queen Latifah comes up and sings the national anthem. I'm like, what is this, man? This is crazy. Yeah. But it, I mean, blessing, bro. Like I'm just like, thank you. You know, yeah. this is crazy. You have to do it at that uh, point, yeah. man. Like the, that opportunity alone, bro. Like I hear the the cheers when the when the uh, FC Dallas is playing. Like I can hear the crowd in here, and they saw double pane fucking windows. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like uh, that. <laughs> Those people like cheering for one, you know, one person. I saw the the Ronaldo. Have you ever seen the Ronaldo uh, documentary? No, bro, watch that shit. I watch it. I mean, it'd be different. I mean, I guess if you're an athlete, you're just like, yeah, every, every fucking day, you know, so every Sunday. But for me, like seeing like the love that he received from fucking absolutely everybody. No, well, like, he's on a different. He's yeah, a different I mean, level, yeah, yeah, no, but but you get to experience that too, bro. Yeah. Like like a sack. There's, I mean, when you get a sack, there's oh, the for me, there's not a better. I mean. I mean there's a lot of better feelings in life, but I'm saying like, there's not a better feeling like at that moment. Like, Do you have a dance? I, I mean, I don't have a dance. I, I always represent my city. I throw yeah. up the W, you yeah. know, so I always represent my city. So yeah, but no this dance, is, no dance, man. I can't dance. No, you got uh, two, you're like I, me two left feet plus motion sickness. Uh, yeah, that, exactly. <laughs> I can boogie a little bit. That's about it. Hell yeah. So give me, give me a little bit of a rundown on what you plan on doing with that if you can. And then uh, we'll, we'll close yeah, it out, dude. Um, what I want to do with this, man, and, and what we want to do with it, the thing is I, I want to make it a family thing, you know, what, like with our circle, I want to keep it our circle. And, you know, we kind of just want to, you know, reach out to, you know, maybe other players on different teams and, you know, kind of get their boys together. And, yeah. um, you know, we just want to, we want to match up. We're going to have, um, you know, some, some cool things going on with cool prizes, you know, hopefully, um, you know, some big game tickets and, you know, jerseys and, Helmets, you know, things like that uh, for, you know, everybody to win, um, everybody to be a part of. Uh, we want to have good discussion, you know, in, in our in our in our chats. We want to have good discussion. We want people to come and listen. We don't want to talk to only, you know, the celebrities. We want to talk to, you know, regular people uh, well, fans. like us. Yeah, yeah fans. I mean, like we're we we all consider ourselves regular who I, who I kick it with. You know, we're regular people. We want to kick it and talk it with talk with everybody, you know, um, 
and just, you know, just get everybody's opinion, not just, you know, the people that the rest of the world thinks is important. We just want to get everybody's opinion on, you know, <clears throat> different things in life. And we want to talk about life. We want to talk about, you know, um, you know, some of the things that are going to spark some, some interesting conversations, yeah. but we also just want to, you know, play games, man. We want to, we want to play games. We want to get better. We want to get some good guys, you know, go up against some good guys, you know, uh, I want to play you once, you know. I mean, we could, yeah. we could just we could just uh, oh, we could play together. Yeah, yeah, play together. I, I, we could do I, that too. I like that. I like yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So I'm man, not ready just, for that. You know, I'm not ready for that. The yeah, smoke. Yeah, yeah. yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> Me neither. But uh, yeah, man, just you know, get get uh, our group of guys together and find a way to you know just make this thing work for us. Um, you know, as far as you know, chopping it with 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 everybody and uh, having good conversation and playing the game, man. Like it's it's gonna be all fun for us. Um, gonna have some good streaming, some good tournaments, and well, listen, if you ever get that like up and running, the first if you even before you get it up and running, why don't you get your team out here, get another team out here, I'll set it up right here for you, I'll even stream it for you, you know what I'm saying? And then we that's that's all you need, man. That one step at a time. This is the first step. I really bring your squad that, here, and then we'll we'll bring another squad or whoever you want to play from another team, whatever. We'll get it. We'll, we'll chop it up in here. Like it's private, it's quiet. I know you. I know you don't like just talking about things. You like doing it. I so like we doing. Don't, we don't, don't get I don't, that done. I don't waste no time talking hey, about. We gonna things, get that done then. Let me tell you. Yeah. Listen, bro. Thank you so much for Appreciate stopping. You. you know I'm gonna ask you for autographs, dude. Of course. So please course. Uh, do it. that while I while I close this out. Uh, Tyrone Crawford. Obviously, all his information, social media is gonna be listed in the, in the description down below. Be sure to follow it. Uh, also, be sure to follow us on every single audio platform that's out there. Just in case you're driving and you don't want to watch the video, you can listen to it. iTunes, Spotify, uh, SoundCloud, Stitcher, Google podcast and itunes uh again one last shout out to our sponsors this week that happens to be candid thank you so much for the sponsorship yet again and of course seagate the one that helps us every single day here at the hacks quarters we truly appreciate it thanks a lot man thank you so much this won't be the last time i'm gonna call upon you to hop on the podcast yeah i'm gonna need to jump on again i need to shout out all my teammates on the yeah please, Moon please do well. bro yeah. hit it, hit yeah, it. Yeah, well i mean i <laughs> I'm telling you, I, I'm going to give the names right now. Yeah, but, you know, uh, we got, you know, my little cousin, Isaiah. Uh, we got Terrence, my brother, you know, Chase. We got Mike. I'm going to give you all gamer tags after this, too. Uh, <laughs> but uh, not after this, but I'm, I'm going to give it uh, the next podcast I jump yeah, on. Yeah, hell yeah. Yeah, we got Mike. I don't want to miss anybody. Vince, Jamie, uh, Hitch. Well, we call him, he's Anthony, but we call him Hitch. Um, and, we, and we got a couple other guys, you know, so uh, definitely going to um, – hear more about that in the future this is i guess our first little uh you know coming to party yeah, right? yeah, coming yeah, out party yeah, yeah so hell yeah uh this this is the this is the logo and uh yeah we're gonna we're gonna I like it. i expect this. to have like a, an xl in in the mail oh soon. yeah yeah for sure i'm gonna drop it off personally yeah, hell yeah. i'll come up here and drop dude it off. again thank you so much man appreciate you appreciate guys it, man. we'll see you guys on the next one <laughs>